morning. It's Monday morning and um, I was supposed to already have a video uploaded this morning, but today is a very, very special day and it's a pretty emotional day for me. Um, today marks the one year anniversary of my arrival into the city of Santiago uh, de Compostela in Spain after walking almost 500 miles from France. So I have mentioned this before in previous vlogs if you are a veteran <laughs> at the channel um, and I have mentioned my other channel before I'll get there. So just wanted to commemorate today. I'm here sitting outside the grocery store. I'm going to pick up some uh, food, some ingredients. I want to make some food that reminds me of my trip. Uh, food that I consumed a lot <laughs> during my trip. Uh, while there are lots and lots of things that I would love to be able to cook today. I'm just gonna do a couple that are very special that really represent my trip. I am going to be making um, tortilla de patatas, so like a Spanish tortilla, basically kind of like an egg omelet with potato and onion. Spanish tortilla was just something I looked forward to, something warm and comforting that I looked forward to almost every morning usually have that with a cup of um, coffee, a coffee americano, or an orange juice, like a fresh squeezed orange juice. And then the last thing I'm kind of going to kind of splurge on today is I'm going to make a Santiago tart. The Santiago tart is synonymous with the city of Santiago and also uh, synonymous, just a symbol of the Camino de Santiago. Um, it's basically like an almond cake and on the top it's decorated with uh, the the cross of St. James, um, which you'll see. It's kind of similar to a fleur-de-lis, but it's not. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get to the grocery store now so that I can pick up the ingredients that I need. My handy dandy little notebook here. So let me get to doing that and then I will meet you at home. All right, let's do a grocery haul. Let me show you what I picked up. Okay, grocery haul. I went to Food for Less. I spent about $89, no particular order. Uh, green bell peppers were on sale for 25 cents each, so I got four of those. I have two cucumbers here that I'm going, that I'm planning to do like a quick pickle. Um, we've got some ginger. We have a assorted variety of fruits and veg here. Uh, we have three limes, an orange, two lemons, and a red onion. We have some eggs, we have a, a bunch of kale, lettuce, we have a bag of onions because I'm completely out. We have almond flour here, which is what I need to make the Tarta de Santiago. Um, some olives just to have on hand because Rob likes those. Running low on olive oil, so I bought some Kroger brand. Got some sriracha here for, I think, well, one of the recipes called for uh, sriracha that I'm doing this week. We have frozen chicken thighs because Colin is on a kick where he wants to lose a bit of weight, so we're just going to do a bunch of chicken for him. Um, we've got a monster, a sugar-free monster for him, and then also a Red Bull, don't judge. Um, we have coffee. Instead of Cafe Bustelo, I decided to get this brand, one of the perks, I don't know. It, it was $2.99, so it's cheap. I don't know, we'll try it and see it. Hopefully it'll be okay. This is the big bag of potatoes that I didn't want to buy last week because I don't use potatoes, but I'm gonna be making the tortilla, de, tortilla española, no, tor tortilla de patatas, so I need patatas. <laughs> We've got um, some Polska kielbasa. And then over here we have more meats. We've got some turkey. 
deli meat. We have Black Forest ham deli meat. We have a big thing of bacon. And here we have 80-20 ground beef. That was kind of on sale here for $6.79 for two pounds. And then I bought a chuck roast, which I haven't bought in a while. It was on sale for $8, so there's a chuck roast in there. A little bit more produce. We have some tomatoes. And, oh, actually, that's it. That is our grocery haul. That's $89. And now I'm going to make myself some coffee. Um, I don't have an espresso maker, so I'm actually going to, I think, I'm hoping I still have instant espresso uh, to mimic my, what do you call it? My cafe americano before I make my, I guess maybe I don't have, I thought I had some instant espresso, but apparently I'm out. So I'm gonna make myself some coffee uh, in lieu of an espresso for my cafe americano. I'm gonna get to making my tortilla and yeah, we'll just carry on with the day. I'm just gonna have a tortilla for like brunch. Normally on a regular day of the pilgrimage walk, I would get up and leave around anywhere between six to eight, depending. And then I would have a quick bite, like usually a coffee or a little bit of a croissant. Um, at, early on, like maybe within the first 5Ks of walking, maybe, yeah, something like that. So if I stop into a village that has a little cafe, I'll stop and have a coffee, maybe a croissant. I'll walk for a little bit more and then I'll have a more substantial second breakfast. It's just usually the tortilla. And then uh, carry on walking and then grab some lunch and go on with the day. So I'm gonna start now with some coffee and I don't have a croissant, but I'm just gonna start with coffee. So let's do that. Okie doke. So to start the tortilla. Now, my little disclaimer, I am not an expert on Spanish cuisine, cooking Spanish cuisine. I'm following the recipe that's in Spanish, which I don't really speak the language so much. I have like a little bit of um, Spanish knowledge about high school level and I can kind of make things out, and I know there's Google Translate, etc. But, okay, um, I'm gonna do the best I can, and this is not gonna be super authentic, but it's my take on it. <laughs> okay, here we go. All the recipes will be linked below. I'm starting off with some potatoes that I sliced super, super thin, and uh, some garlic and onion. I'm heating up the oil. I'm using canola oil. The recipe calls for olive, but I didn't have that much olive oil, so I'm using canola oil here. I'm gonna wait till that gets up to temperature. Once the oil is hot enough, and I test it up by throwing a tiny piece of potato in, <laughs> I go ahead and put the potatoes in. Now this is a lot, a lot of oil. I don't know how much oil that is. Uh, probably at least a couple cups. I'm gonna to toss the potatoes in the oil and keep moving them around so that they're completely coated in the oil and each piece has a chance to cook up. Potatoes will continue to cook in the oil for about 15 minutes or so, so I give it a bit of a turn, a little toss, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom until that time is about elapsed and the potatoes are translucent but not yet falling apart. Transferring everything to this actual um, pot that I'm going to be using to, to form the tortilla at the very end. And then back into that same fry pan, I am putting the onions and garlic. Once those are cooked to translucent, I'm gonna add that to the potatoes and the oil. turn that back to medium heat. Gonna season the ingredients so far with salt and pepper. Give it a good toss so that it's all seasoned throughout. And 
then I'm going to add the egg to this mixture. I'm going to move super fast. I don't want the egg to sit where it is. So I take my small little spatula and kind of stir everything around to mix the egg in throughout with the potatoes, the onions, and the garlic. Going to do my best to keep everything super even. And then I'm going to cover it and that's gonna cook for a few minutes. After a few minutes, I'm just shaking everything around and making sure to make sure the eggs are not sticking to the pot. So I'm just taking my spatula again just to make sure nothing is going to stick. You notice the top of this is not completely set yet, and this is where the big flip comes. Very scary, be super careful. It's still hot. Do a flip onto a plate. And then you're gonna return this tortilla back into the same pot. So I'm gonna try to slide it off as evenly as possible, but I did lose some of the inside there, not to worry. I'm gonna take my handy dandy little spatula again and just kind of shape everything and form it the way I want to. I'm gonna try to even it out. You can see part of it is a little taller than the other side, so I'm just kind of evening it out so that it cooks well so it cooks evenly. After another three or four minutes, it's time to do the second flip back onto a plate. And there you have it, that is the finished tortilla. So it's now set on both sides and cooked throughout. I'm just sliding it onto a cleaner plate here since the other one I used was a little messy. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of make it tidy. I'm going to tidy it up here. And that is the finished tortilla. Tortilla de patatas. Tortilla espanol. So delicious. So comforting. I'm slicing into it here and it's just, it takes me back. It just takes me back. So yummy. So good with a piece of crusty bread, which I don't have, <laughs> and my cafe americano, which I don't have. <laughs> but that is my tortilla de patatas. <laughs> Moving on to lunchtime, once I have settled into wherever it is that I was headed for during the day, I usually ordered a, um, a salad, ensalada mixta. It's basically just a green salad, normally topped with tuna, which they call atun, and some veggies usually tomatoes. Um, some places I was really lucky I got some olives and sometimes white asparagus, whatever they had. So veggies um, with lettuce, a bed of lettuce, tuna, and then seasoned with uh, condiments that were placed on the table, which is basically salt and pepper. And then you put your own oil and vinegar on top and you just dress it like um, as you prefer. So that is basically what I'm doing here. I'm doing a simple, super, super simple salad. Just tuna, tomatoes, some onion, uh, lettuce, and then my dressing. Thank you. 
I can't tell you how comforting it was to sit down to a big hearty salad of tuna <laughs> and veggies after walking 15 to 20 miles. It's just comfort food. It was comfort food. And this will always bring that back for me. Lastly, I'm going to end this video with a recipe for Tarta de Santiago, the quintessential dessert. Um, just, it's just Santiago. It's, it's Santiago. Starting off with zesting some lemon and an orange. This gives it so much flavor. This recipe honestly is very simple to put together. It's not complicated at all. Very few ingredients really, and it's just the simplicity of the ingredients that bring out just that wonderful, just that wonderful, comforting, sweet, homemade goodness. I don't know how to describe it. Um, again, just really delicious with a cup of coffee or, um, an Aquarius, which is a soda, kind of like a Gatorade that I used to have, but I couldn't find Aquarius. They don't sell Aquarius here in the States, I don't think. Um, so unfortunately, I was not able to have that for this video, but just mixing up the eggs and sweetener. Now, the recipe calls for sugar. I am using monk fruit, uh, the Lakanto brand of uh, sweetener, monk fruit sweetener with erythritol. Then I'm going to add in my almond flour, which I believe because it's using almond flour, this is also a gluten-free recipe. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't follow a gluten-free recipe per se, but um, I do believe this can work for gluten-free. Uh, I put some cinnamon in there and a pinch of salt. Then I put the zest of the lemon and the orange which I kind of chopped up into smaller bits. And then I'm simply just folding the ingredients. Super simple. And there you go, that is basically the batter. Now I lost the clip here of where I floured and, or greased and floured the uh, container, the baking dish that I'm using. But once I've done that, I go ahead and put the batter in there. And then that goes into the oven at 360 degrees Fahrenheit until it's set about 45 minutes. Um, actually, for me, it was like 50, 50 to 55 minutes, I believe. So just check depending on your oven. And there you go. That is the finished, well, that's the cooked Santiago tart. the finishing touch here. I'm just taking a little stencil that I cut out of St. James's Cross. I put it on top of a perfectly 100% cooled cake and just dust it with some powdered sugar. And once you remove the stencil, it will leave the mark of St. James. the stencil plop and there you go my beautiful tarta de santiago proudly displayed in my little cake stand give it a little taste of course slice it up it is such an aromatic cake even with just the simple ingredients of just the lemon zest and the and the orange zest and there you go. You see the crumb inside, it's nice and tender, really moist. I probably would have used a little bit less sweetener just because I don't like things as sweet, but it was pretty sweet. But there you go, there you have it. My Tarta de Santiago on my one year anniversary.
out my little walk down memory lane, no pun intended, via the foods that I ate on the Camino de Santiago. Today is a very, very special day, and I appreciate you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you try some of the recipes. Um, I will have the recipes linked below that I used for the tortilla de patatas and the tarta de, de Santiago. So those two things will be linked down below. If you try them, let me know how you like them. They really just bring back the Camino to me. If you're interested in watching my journey, um, check out my other channel here. I'll get there. I have uploaded up through day 34, I believe. Each day um, I vlogged and share with you my thoughts and my feelings, the beautiful scenery um, in northern Spain, and just, just my heart. So I hope you guys do pop by over there. I would really appreciate that. I think that's it. I'm just going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much again for joining me. I will see you in the next video. And until then, be well, be well in. Buen camino. Have a good journey. Good night.